Hey everybody, welcome back. I am bored. COVID made me bored. And today at the table, I am taking a look at TAC decks or tactics. And this is the Halo version. I think there were a few IP iterations of tactics and um, I, I stumbled upon this one. It was just sitting off in the corner all alone at my local game store shelf. And I the only thing, reason it caught my eye is because I see Master Chief sitting on there, and I love Halo. Uh, I think anything IP-based that has Halo, I would probably do it. I'm actually looking for like Halo Risk, uh, the board game. Uh, that'd be fun uh, with all the little Halo miniatures. Um, so I saw this, and I know nothing about tactics uh, or this particular card game. This came out in 2014, so it's, it's fairly old. And just uh, before I continue, I am feeling under the weather, so my voice has uh, gotten a lot harsher. Uh, and I'm, I am coughing a bit, but that has not stopped me from being bored today. And I'm glad that you could pull up a chair and join me and be bored with me today. So uh, this is sort of a, a filler game. I'm calling this a filler game. It's the kind of game that fits in your back pocket, easy to carry around. Uh, it's very, very simple to teach, very simple to play, probably plays in less than 20 minutes, depending on how quickly you go through your cards. And at the end of the day, this boils down to war. Rock, paper, scissors, something to that effect. But it's mostly war, uh, the card game based war. And, and if you know anything about it, uh, I used to play it when I was a kid a long time ago before I got into poker and all these other uh, card games. <clears throat> I, uh, you, you basically are uh, uh, the highest number wins. You, each, you separate a, a standard deck of cards into two piles if you're playing against a friend. And you draw randomly a card, whoever has the highest number or highest value of that, uh, um, of that card value. Uh, you win. You win that battle and you take their card. And you keep on going until you've gone through all your, your cards and then you count up the number of cards that you have and whoever has the most uh, cards uh, wins the game. So tactics is basically the same, except there's a few twists in the cards that can sort of change things up. I wouldn't call it strategic, but you can, you can mess things up a little bit just so that you can tip the balance in your favor. There's not a lot of components, but this is based on, uh, I think it's Halo 4 because the... Uh, if you look here, I don't know if you can see it. It does show 343 Studios. That's, uh, I believe that's when they took over at, uh, the Halo series, uh, starting at Halo 4. And that kind of looks like Halo 4 Master Chief Mjolnir that he's wearing. So, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so basically, it's, it is basically war. Like you've never played it before. Uh, and you'll be dueling to the finish using the battle marker to determine the highs and lows. If it's, if it's set to high, the highest card wins. If it's set to low, the lowest card wins. So there's sort of a change there compared to the standard uh, war that you would play with a standard deck of cards. And you'll be given two decks of cards. You're given the Covenant cards. And uh, all images of all the Covenant, um, I guess, here, let me see. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. There you go. Um, different values. Uh, as well as different images. The images are irrelevant. It's mostly just for people like me who buy into the IP and just enjoy the artwork. Uh, so it's nothing fancy. And uh, they all have different values, but there are certain cards that have certain effects. So for example, and it'll make more sense once I sort of give a quick rundown. So if you play this card at the end of your turn, you would normally draw one card, but in this case, you draw an extra, so you draw two. And this one, you're actually able to it's kind of like a peak. So once the cards are revealed, then you get to play a card. So you can choose uh, what kind of card you want to play. This card with the little flip allows you to choose if you want to flip the battle marker from a high to a low or low to high. And again, it'll make more sense once I give a quick rundown. And then you have this one, which is minus a card, which is your opponent. You get to choose uh, randomly one card out of their hand and discard it. So you'll be shuffling these cards and in the bottom half of of the deck, so you'll separate it. The bottom half, you're going to include this card, which is the end game. Uh, your other player will also have their deck of cards, which is, which is the UNSC cards, and they will do the same. You're going to shuffle into the bottom half, and at some point, you will reach this end game. One of you will reach this end game. It doesn't mean the game is over, it just means the end is coming. It isn't until the second player also draws that end game card that the game finishes and you count the number of cards that you have. So that would be the stack of cards that you have ready to go for the Covenant side. Your opponent, or you, would choose the UNSC side. Oh, there's Master Chief right there holding the railgun. So again, he's got that little symbol which can flip the battle marker 
And again, all standard images from the Halo world. Uh, although I don't know where the Mantis comes in. I don't remember seeing it in Halo 4. The Rocket Launcher, the Warthog, Scorpion. Oh, there is one that says you get to draw an extra card at the end of your turn. And I believe there's one with Cortana. She allows you to view first and then play a card after. And there's a, I guess this is more Halo 4 as well. These are different Spartan armor that I've never seen. And I think there was one more. There was the minus one too. There, there's the minus one. The frag grenade gives you a minus, a minus card to your opponent that you choose out of their hand. So again, you would shuffle your cards and you'd split it in half. You take the your end marker for the UNSC and you shuffle that in. So somewhere at some at some point you will run into that end game. And once your opponent also gets their end game card, that's it. Okay, so I've got the UNSC versus the Co Covenant ready to go. And then you would place your battle marker. This is your battle marker. This is what you're basically uh, dictating who's winning the battle. If it's set on high, which is the uh, the starting point, you'll always set it on high. The highest card value wins. If at some point you flip it to the low side, the lowest card will win. But we start on high. And then for each player, they draw a hand of five, five cards. And they'll be looking at those cards. So you'll see over here, I've got these ones for the UNSC. And then the Covenant side, they would draw five, two, three, four, five. And you'll see I've got these. OK, so I've got my two cards. Obviously, I'm playing open handed because it's just me. But I have played this with my nephew. It is fun. It seems very simple to just, oh, ooh, highest number or lowest number wins. But there are moments in the game where you can you think you're, you're going to get it, and then he flips it on you, or, or the, uh, the battle marker flips over, and then you're like, oh, I just lost that one. Or you're just dealt a rotten set of hands, and all you have is low numbers, so it's set on high forever. Um, and then that way you're, you're, you're not really winning anything. You'll each take, at the beginning of the turn or the beginning of the battle, you'll each uh, take one of your cards and you'll place them face down. So the other opponent doesn't know, the opponent does not know what you're putting down. Obviously you're aiming for high, you want to win the battle. So in this case, this is a great example. So I would probably take the 10 and the 10 face down. Then you would flip simultaneously and you'll see that you both have... Uh, got both 10s, so it's sort of a tie. It doesn't stop there. You keep on doing it until someone wins this battle. So obviously I would take nine, right? And I'd flip. I got the two nines, again, another tie. And then I'd go with my eight. Oh, I've got another eight here. And then I would flip over. Uh, the eights are tie again. And then we would, I would probably pick my six, and my only choice here is the five. So I would face this down when I flip over, there's a couple things that take effect here. So first of all, I can choose. I can choose to flip this if I wanted to. And how would that make sense? Or why would I do that? Let's just say if I flip this and this was um, a seven. So then I can choose to flip the battle marker over to its low side. And therefore, I have won the battle. Even though initially it was all started high, because I was able to flip it to low, and let's just say this was a seven, my uh, my side would win and I would actually take all my opponent's cards. But in this case, so I'm not going to because I want to stay high. But because of that, I would lose a random card in my hand. Now, according to the rules, it's only if you have at least three cards for the opponent. So I only have one. So technically, this would not work. So after that's done, uh, UNSC on this side has won the battle. They would collect all the cards from the opponent and place it off into a sort of victory pile. You have a victory pile right there, right there. That would be my victory pile. These have all been used, and they would go into my discard pile. And then we would draw a card. We would each draw a card. So again, we're still the battle marker is still on high. And obviously, I'd probably pick this one. The Covenant side would pick this one. We'd flip 10 to 7. I lost that battle. So this one would go into their victory pile. This would go in their discard pile. And for the UNSC player, he would draw an extra card at the end of his turn, so he would draw two. And this player would draw one. I have done a short house rule with my nephew to, you know, if you're, you draw up to three. So you always have at least three cards. I know at the end of turn, according to base rules, you only draw one card, but then you could be really limited in terms of your choices, and that does kind of suck. So you could easily house rule and say, 
If you're if you have less than three cards, draw up to three cards. So we're still stuck on high. So let's just say we're playing these two cards. We flip over. So here's a great example. So now I see that he would win the battle, but I get to choose. I can choose to flip this, and I do. So I'm going to flip this over to the low side. I win the battle. Covenant side would draw an extra card at the end of the turn, but I collect this into my victory pile. This goes into my discard. We draw, and they would draw an extra. Let me move this over here so it's not in the, the glare. And then play would continue back and forth, back and forth, well, until you reach, uh, both players reach their end game uh, marker, which is at the, usually in the bottom half of their stack. Once they've done that, they would take their victory pile and count out the number of cards that they have. Person with the highest cards wins. So it's very straightforward. It's, it's just as simple as the card game War, except with the twist. The twist of having these kind of cards to flip the marker when you need it. Or if you have, I think the one in here is the Jackal. The Jackal. So you get to see the opponent's card and then play another card. So you would, you would place this down. Let's just imagine I put this one down. I'm doing the low. And now, because I see that he's played the, played the low, I can play one of my low cards, and then I win that battle. So you're kind of using that to your advantage. So I like, I like that. It's a nice twist. It's, it's simple. It's quick. But it's not necessarily as dull as just playing straight out war, uh, comparing your high numbers. And because you're doing high and low, it mixes it up, rather than just say just the highs all the time. So that's it. It, it was a very, very, very basic filler game. It comes with a very small manual. You probably won't find this anymore unless you maybe your local game store has it. But for crying out loud, if you want to play War, just pull out a standard deck of cards and you can play that. But uh, it was Halo themed. It uh, it it was it was very cheap because I think the uh, the game um, the store owner just wanted to get rid of it. It's sitting on a shelf collecting dust, and uh, I'm the kind of guy that apparently collects games with dust on them. So. Uh, Hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, thanks for watching Halo Tactics with me and playing and being bored with me. Until next time, stay bored.